Hello? I am coming on YouTube just really quickly. I have a word that has been on my spirit for almost a week now that God has been really speaking to me about this. And he's been trying to minister in my heart that this coming up year for many is going to be a year in which you're going to see the greatness of God. That's why I titled this message, What's Coming For You Is Big. What's coming for you is big. What the Lord has in the making for your life, for your future, is going to catch you by surprise. But it's something very big. It's something, and I feel like many people have, maybe you already sense it, like God is doing something. One of the signs is, maybe you've been feeling like there's a little bit of silence from God, and you're like, God, are you doing something? Usually when God is silent, it's because we've already done what we had to do. God is saying, okay, now let me do the rest. And the way that the Lord ministered this to me, I want to look it up in the Bible real quick. The way that the Lord ministered to me is by going to the book of Joshua. Let me find it. The book of Joshua. Right, let's talk a little bit about Joshua. He really ministered this to me when I got back from, where were we at? The previous city we were at. And he was explaining to me why he gave Joshua so many instructions right as he's getting ready to go into the promised land. So if we go to Joshua 1, right, he tells them, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them, right? I kept on asking myself, like, why did God tell Joshua so many times to be strong and courageous, right? Like if somebody, if you're about to go on a trip and someone keeps telling you like, be strong and courageous, you're like, why? Why do I have to be strong? I'm just like, I'm just going somewhere. Nothing crazy is getting ready to happen. God bless your seed on YouTube. But the Lord kept on telling Joshua, be strong and courageous, Joshua, because what you guys have been waiting for, for so many years, for so many years is getting ready to come to pass, right? There has been an accumulation of prayers for what God is bringing to pass in your life. There is an expectation. There is almost like a heavenly depth that God has been looking for somebody in generations, right? Your mom, your grandmama, people from your past, and the Lord has been looking for someone and he found you. And everything that other people weren't able to receive, God is saying, I'm bringing it to pass with you. Maybe your aunties were supposed to get it. Maybe your cousins were supposed to get it, but they weren't able to pay the price, right? Because sometimes you come from a family of believers and you're like, well, my aunts could be chosen too, but not everyone has the same passion for God. Not everyone has that same patience. Not everyone has that same pursuit for him. So the Lord looks and he says, who am I going to pick to bring these words to pass? Because the Bible says that God is not a man that he shall lie. So if he says he's going to bless somebody, he, he brings it to pass. But sometimes, remember, with Moses, Moses didn't go into the promised land because he got angry and he disobeyed God. And God said, because of this, you're not going to go into the promised land. So it happens like that. Right, like somebody else was supposed to inherit the promise, but they didn't receive it because of sin, because of disobedience, because of lack of patience, whatever that might be. But then God runs into somebody like you, somebody that's willing, somebody that's able, somebody that's waiting for the promise to come to pass. And the Lord tells them, be strong and courageous. And I tell you the same thing today. I tell you the same thing today. You know, Joshua was a young man. Right. So God told Joshua this because God understood that man. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me this, because I kept I kept on receiving more from the Lord. The other night, the Lord told me one of the reasons, if you can remember, right, Joshua, they, they go into the promised land and they see that there's giants. There are giants in the place. There are giants. Hallelujah. Holding back what God has for you. Right, God has a promise for you, but there are giants. What can the giants be? Ooh, I love things. It could be depression, anxiety. 
It could be the generational curses that attack your family. It could be drug addictions, right? So one of the reasons why God told Joshua to be strong and courageous, not just because he was going to get the promise and Joshua get excited, but because God was telling him, you're about to run into some giants. Right, you're about to hallelujah, you're about to run into some things that you're going to have to overcome. Right. And that's the same reason why the Lord is telling you today. Yes, get excited. The promise is coming to pass. Yes, start getting your best outfits ready. Yes, get into prayer. Yes, get in position. But the Lord is saying to you today, there might be some giants standing over your promise. There might be some things that you're going to have to overcome. But it's important for you to know that you have been sent with a word. That says, be strong and courageous, right? As long as that is your foundation, right? The Lord tells them, and I'm a little Bible here. Okay, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Amen. That's the first time, right? The second time he says, be strong and very courageous, right? Just in case you didn't hear me, Joshua, be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave to you. Do not Turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this, the, this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Amen. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Now, look what verse 9 says. Have I not commanded you? Have I not commanded you? Again, I was sitting in my little meditation and asking the Lord, God, why did you command him to do this, right? Like, why does God command us to bring to pass certain promises? I heard a preacher some time ago, and she said, when God is picking for somebody to break generational curses, and she was making a joke, she was like, God, you're going to have to pick somebody else, right? Because sometimes it could be difficult. But for some of you, there is a command over your life to be strong courageous you need to tell yourself i don't have another option there are moments in which god puts you against a wall and he says the only option you have to come out of this situation is to be strong and courageous and somebody here today needs to adopt the mentality that i can't afford to sit around and be sad if i have to do it sad if i have to do it with little strength that's okay because the bible says that when i am make weak the lord is stronger when I am weak, he grows stronger. So you need to understand today that each time you walk in obedience and you listen to the command of the Lord to be strong and courageous, the promise will come to pass. It's an, it's like for sure. And sometimes you might receive the promise and you might not even feel 100% because it could be a little bit tiring by the time you get there. You're like, oh, we made it. But the good thing is that you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to get to the place that the Lord has for you. You're going to receive the promises that the Lord has for you. It does not matter if there's some giants in your promised land. It does not matter if people are saying we're not going to make it because the Israelites for some time doubted. Somebody needs to stand up like Joshua and say, I have been commanded to be strong and courageous. If nobody else wants to come with me, that's fine. But the promised land is mine, right? Like Joshua, he had to take, he had to, you know, Listen to this. There are certain situations that bring out the warrior in you. It, it has to come out. Honestly, there are moments in which God says, what are you going to do now? Are you going to keep on hiding? And I need to tell you this out of love because I had to go through that. That I was always like, mm, God, mom, pray for me. Dad, pray for me. Until God said, no, no, no. You got to pray for yourself, Daniela. And I'm here to tell you the same thing today. It's time for the warrior in you, for the woman of God in you, for the man of God in you, for the person that God has always called you to be, for the person that God initially created you to be. Because this is what the Lord was telling me. For many of you, just like Joshua, Joshua didn't know that he was going to inherit the promise. Like he didn't know that. Like his purpose, like, oh, this is this is what I've been created to do. And many of you need to understand that behind the command to be strong and courageous in whatever it is that God is calling you to do, the purpose for your life is going to come. 
You might not know what the Lord called you to do, but today the Lord is telling you, man, if you would be strong and courageous and just walk towards what I'm calling you to do, you might just mess around and run into your purpose. You might mess around and run into your successful business. You might mess around and run into what the Lord had for you all along. Because in the moments in which you don't know why God is calling you in that direction, God is saying, I am bringing the best version out of you. The best version is coming out of you. For many of you people of God, and I'm telling you this right now, you have not seen you at your best potential. And it's not fair for you to let that die. No, because I'm sad today. No, 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 no. We, we can't live that way because God is depending on you. For real. God was depending on Joshua. That's why the Lord tells Joshua, Joshua, okay, you're going to lead these people, right? Joshua, there is... Like, it's no longer just about you. It's about your, your siblings. It's about your family. It's about the generations that are going to come after you. And many of us need to understand that this moment, right? Because I, there's this pressure. And somebody tell me if you've been feeling this too. There is this pressure that we've been feeling. That the Lord is saying, it's now. Th right now, you need to get yourself together. Right now, you need to get into your prayer. Right now, you need to get into your fasting. That's it. You have time to cry. You have time to go through what you went through. I healed you. I restored you. For many of you, the Lord is saying everything you need to be successful is standing right in front of you. But sometimes we don't want to see it for what it is. And God is saying, I need you. Hallelujah. To see it for what it is. I need you to see yourself as the person that is going to bring victory. To the Israelites. So again, the Lord tells them, have I not commanded you? Right? There is this commandment. And again, I really like that thought because I could imagine Joshua receiving this word from God. And he's like, okay, well, I, I got to get myself together. I, I have to go ahead and, and be strong and courageous because I have a word over my life. And that's what we need to do. Sometimes whenever we receive a word from God, and I say this with love, <coughs> with respect and from experience. You know, I minister and I go with my sister and I've seen a lot of people receive prophetic words. And sometimes people are like, like they're so calm as if the creator of heaven and earth is not coming into your life and telling you that I'm going to change your life forever. We need to get excited whenever we receive a word from God, because whenever God finally answers, whenever God shows up in your situation, it's like, finally, right? If we can remember the Bible says in the Old Testament, right, that God wouldn't speak to everyone. Sometimes we, we take that prophetic word and we're like, okay, like, we don't even get excited. And I tell you this with love for real, but you need to get excited. You need to be like Joshua, like God has spoken to me. Well, God has declared like, hallelujah. God has said something in my life. Thank God that he has set his eyes on me. Thank God that my prayer has reached heaven. Thank God that this situation isn't going to stay like this. Thank God that there is still hope over my life. Thank God that he's not finished with me yet. Thank God that I haven't seen how good it's going to get for me because you have not seen how good it's going to get for you. Maybe you've been in the wilderness for a long time and you got used to the desert. You got used to the dry season, but God is saying, no, you better not get used to that because I'm not finished with you yet. And you're stepping into the place that God has for you. For many, the Lord might be even calling you to move because God is saying, this is a season in which your strength and your courage is required. It's required from you. It's required. Like when you're about to go and get a job and you need to have certain requirements. Well, we need you to have a bachelor's. We need you to have a degree. We need you to have experience the same way with God. And God is saying, this is the requirement for the promise that I have for you. Okay, this is the requirement. You can't walk into that job and just because you're, you know, you're cool. Okay, give me the job. No, they're going to say, hey, show us your credentials. Show us what you got. Show us the requirement the same way with God. You've been praying for this. You've been fasting. Oh, God changed my life. And God is saying, I'm doing it. And the only requirement is for you to be strong and courageous. You need to be strong and courageous. You need to be strong and courageous. The Bible then says, do not be discouraged. Right? I feel like that's really important that the Lord, that God, excuse me, told them that because this it's sometimes you're going to get discouraged 
right? Sometimes you're going to get discouraged. But again, when the Lord tells you something, okay, when God tells you a command, it's because he already knows that he's going to bring you through that. So God was telling them, don't even get discouraged, right? Because I feel like God, you know, God is Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. He sees everything. He probably at that moment saw the version of Joshua that was going to get discouraged. So before that even happened, God tells Joshua, don't even, don't even meditate in that. Don't even dwell in discouragement because what's coming for you is great. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Okay, people of God, my favorite promise, and I'm just going to be honest with y'all about my intimate prayers with God is what the Lord tells Joshua. Okay, I love you guys too, everybody. I always tell God, go with me wherever I go. And the fact that the Lord is telling you this today, again, I want you guys to really allow this to be a foundation in your heart and to not take it lightly because God wouldn't walk with everyone. God doesn't tell everybody in the Bible, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Mm -mm. Some people just receive a miracle. Some people would receive healing. Some people would see a little light and, you know, okay, hallelujah. But for God to tell you that wherever you go, I'm going to be there. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. That means God is going to watch over your steps. That means God is going to direct your steps. That means God is going to destroy your enemies. That means God is going to take care of your every need. And the Lord is telling you that today. Wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. Whatever you ask, I'm going to bring it to pass. The people that come against you are going to come against me. Whatever, whatever, wherever you go, I'm going to go with you. You need to take this word and always ask the Lord that prayer. God, wherever I go, come with me. More than a miracle, more than financial stuff, more than anything, than anything you can ask from the God that I preach to you about. Ask God, just come with me. Just come with me. And the Lord is confirming that promise. If you were feeling abandoned, if you were feeling alone, if you were feeling forgotten, if you were feeling like nobody cared, if you were feeling like you were the last in the list, God is saying, no, no, no. Wherever you go, I'm going with you. Whatever comes against you uh, is coming against me too. Whatever comes against you is coming against me too. The Lord is taking this, this season in your life the, the Lord, look, God is taking this season in your life personal, okay? God is taking this season in your life personal, okay? God has seen many of you cry out to God. God has seen many of you go through injustices. God has seen, right? Because one of the reasons why God brought the people out of, Ish of Egypt was because of all of the slavery, all of the issues that they went through. So for many of you, God saw that season in your life and he's taking this season in your life personal and he wants to see you succeed. The only one that wants to see you fail is the devil. The devil wants you depressed, sad, homeless, destroyed, suicidal. Like the, think of every negative thing and that is the enemy. That's his force towards your life. Just a quick, quick, message to you because i want to talk about this another day but don't play with the enemy don't play with sin don't play with the devil because the devil's desire for your life is everything bad he does not want to see you happy he does not want to see you at peace he doesn't want these promises to come to pass and many of you have learned that right the israelites learned abuse they learned pain they knew what it was like and even like that they still disbelieved in God and disobeyed. But I know that people that are watching me today, you're not like that. You've been persistent in seeking God. You've been obedient. You've been passionate about him. You've been hungry for his word. You've been waiting for this season. And the Lord sends this word to you today because this is a season in which God is trying to bring a lot of promises to pass in your life. God is trying to vindicate you. God is trying to restore you. God is trying to resurrect you. God is trying to ignite that fire again. God is trying to bless you, to prosper you. But you need to be strong and courageous. You need to be strong and courageous. You need to believe in what the Lord is telling you to do. 
You need to believe in what he's bringing to pass. Because I had this vision a couple of nights ago. And I'm going to share another video about it. But just really quickly. In which I saw people just holding doors. And a lot of people coming through. So for many of you, the Lord is saying to you today. The doors are being held open for you. Like people are opening doors for you. They're like, come through. You, you could come through this. You could come through this. And sometimes we're the ones that get in the way of bringing that word to pass. And I'm going to give you a quick advice. Even if you don't have 100% strength, because there are moments in which even for me, I'm like, God, like it's a lot what the Lord asked me. Like whenever I travel, I get a little bit nervous. I get nervous after standing in front of people that know a lot more about me. And I'm like, right. But I do it even nervous. Because God has given me a command and I understand that what the Lord is calling me to do is not about me. It's about other generations, it's about other family. Amen. So it's important for you to understand that even if you don't feel like it 100%, you need to be strong and courageous and God will take care of the rest. Another thing that the Lord was telling me is that for many of you, one of the reasons why you haven't maybe started what God is calling you to do is because you're looking at your strength. Right. The Lord says, wherever you go, I will be with you, Joshua. Why does the Lord tell Joshua this to remind Joshua? You don't have to worry about everything. Right. We don't have to worry about everything. And people of God, don't forget to like this video if you haven't already. If it's your first time watching me, let me know. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do so, please. That would be awesome. Now, one of the reasons why we don't start is because we look at our own strength. We look at what we're able to do. And we look at our past. We look at our past and we say, my past doesn't equal what God wants or wants to bring to pass in my life. Right? The Lord is saying, I want to bless you. I want to prosper. I want to promote you. And then you look at your past and you're like, I mean, those qualities are not back there. Like, I don't see that back there. But the Lord wants me to tell you today, like the Bible says, it's not by your strength, but it's with the strength of the Lord. It's with the spirit of the Lord. It's with the power of God. And if you allow for God to do what only God can do, and I feel his presence in my car right now. I'm at church. We're having a fast. So um, I'm at church. You need to understand that as long as you do your part, God will take care of the rest. God will take care of the rest and he will make sure that the promises come to pass. But like always, we have, we're, we're like a seed, right? And God comes and he waters us once we're planted and then we're able to grow. But we need to be planted. We need to be firm and we need to be confident in this, right? So the command has been given to Joshua and we're in Joshua 1, Okay. Verse 10, so Joshua ordered the, the officers of the people, go to the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. I feel like this is where I find myself today. Today, I can't say like I'm like Joshua because, you know, it's a great man of God. But I want to say by, by being in obedience to the Lord, I'm here to tell you to get ready. Okay, he says, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, okay. You will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possessions of the land the Lord, your God, is giving you for your own. Okay? So I find myself in the position to tell you to get ready. To get ready. And excuse me for reading like that. I was reading and then I was looking over everything else to make sure I don't miss anything. Amen. So get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. If you need to take a fast, okay? If you need to pray, if you need to delete social media and seek God, if you need to go for a walk, if you need to go out to eat, if you need to dress up woman of God to feel something, whatever that might be for you, whatever, get ready. If you need to read your word a little bit more, whatever that might be for you, people of God, Today, I'm here to tell you as a woman of the Lord, as someone that has been seeking him for some time, and he's been ex almost like really telling me this word, I'm here to tell you, get ready. For many of you, it's going to catch you by surprise. 
For many of you, God is, is going to open the door. The, the call is going to come. The text message is going to come. The opportunity is going to come. And the Lord needs you to be ready. I want to read. I want to see one more thing. Look what the Bible says in verse, in the previous verse, verse 34, just so you can understand that for many of you, that's why I titled this message, what's coming is big. What many of you, what's coming is really big. Like you might not even be that ready for it because listen to this. So in verse 34, Joshua's dead, right? Joshua has died. So then it says, verse 9, 30, uh, no, excuse me, Deuteronomy 34, 9. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Okay, now verse 10 says, since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face who did all those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, right? To Pharaoh and to all his officials, to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed that awesome deeds that Moses did in the sights of all Israel. So Moses was one of a kind. And I feel like for somebody, maybe somebody in your family was one of a kind. For me, it could be my grandma. And what Moses had inherited because of his obedience to God, because of his passion to God, and because he was the chosen one for this assignment, out of many things, right, to be able to see face to face, the face of the Lord, to walk with God everywhere he went, he was also going to inherit this big promise to go into the promised land. So this wasn't something that Joshua was supposed to necessarily inherit, right? Because the one that paid the price was Moses. The one that went through it all was Moses. The one that parted the sea was Moses. But Moses didn't make it. So now everything that was supposed to come into the life of Moses, right? So everything that was supposed to come into the life of Moses is now coming into the life of Joshua. Now we have two different personas. We have a Moses that must have prayed a lot and done a lot to part a Red Sea. And then we have Joshua, right? Who doesn't have the same level of experience, yet he's being the one chosen to bring to pass such a big promise. So what is the Lord telling you today? The same thing. God is telling you, for many of you, you might not even have paid the price for this blessing that's coming into your life. You might not be the one that went through the wilderness, the one that parted the sea, the one that had to fast, the one that had to go before Pharaoh, the one that saw the burning bush. But God is saying, but you're the one that's going to see the promise come to pass. And it's going to be something big. And I feel the presence of God on that one because the level of the glory that Moses walked in the Bible, we just read it, people of God. No one was able to do what Moses did, right? No one was able to do what that man did. And many of you are walking into a season in which, again, the promise that was made for somebody in your past generation is coming to pass in your life. It's coming to pass in your life. It's going to be something big. And I, I, I hope I explained that effectively for you to understand, again, the difference between these two men. We have a Moses that did amazing things. Joshua was just kind of like walking along Moses, right? Joshua was the one that was, yeah. So Joshua doesn't have like the big testimony. Joshua doesn't have the years of experience. Joshua doesn't have... You know, the staff, Joshua isn't, but he's the one that has been chosen to bring this to pass. So for whoever this prophetic word is for, and I, I bless you, God, and we honor your holy word, and we thank you for using it to speak to us 
in this season because we appreciate your direction, God. We don't take this for granted and we bless your word. We give you all of the glory, God, and we give you all of the honor. Whoever this word is for, this is something that might even be a little bit undeserved. But the Lord has seen your heart. That is the foundation of why this word is coming to pass. God has seen your heart. And because of your heart, he's bringing to pass this promise. He's bringing to pass this promise this coming of year. That's it. Like you've made it. That's why the Lord spoke to us a couple of days ago. Remember the, the video I shared on my YouTube? And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe, guys. I shared, get ready to celebrate. Get ready to celebrate. So I've been asking God, God, what are we going to celebrate? I received congratulations from so many people. I have, I think I have it here. Look, and I just want to take some time to thank people that send me P.O. Box uh, letters. P.O. Box D, Waxahachie, Texas, 75168. This is from a brother in Christ that I pray for. If you have prayer requests, you could send them to me. I'm over, I keep them in my car and I pray for them. But this gentleman, he doesn't know me. I mean, he knows me from YouTube and he sent me woohoo. And then it says, congratulations. And I was like, God, what, what are you congratulating us for? Right. I received this letter and he sent this before I even shared the video. So it was like a confirmation from God. And I was like, God, what are we celebrating? And after praying and seeking the Lord, God gave me this word. God gave me the word that you guys, many of us are celebrating right? Celebrating, getting to this place in which the Lord now gives you the command on what you need to do to inherit the promised land, right? So again, people of God, what's coming for your life is going to be something big. Start celebrating, start celebrating, right? So the Bible tells, the Lord tells Joshua what to do. And Joshua goes ahead and tells the people, get ready. So get ready, people of God, get excited, the promise is coming to pass. The Lord is doing amazing things. The address for the P.O. Box, and I'm going to share because I love when you guys send me letters. I always tear up a little bit. Is P.O. Box D, Waxahachie, Texas, 75168. You could put it under Daniela Oyaga. What's coming to pass this season is going to be something worth celebrating. It's going to be something worth telling people about. You're coming out of the secret pace. But again, right here, I like to use the Bible so people know that I'm not just speaking out of my, you know. So they go. And the whole thing happens with Rahab. Just remember that. I don't know exactly where it says it, but I know it's in here somewhere that there were giants at their land. So if at this moment you're like, okay, Daniela, I'm already walking in that season. I already feel God doing it, okay? And you don't know why certain things are coming against you. These are the giants. These are the giants, okay? Sometimes there's giants at your promised land, but that does not make the promised land any less yours. That does not mean, oh, God's not going to do it because I'm feeling a little depressed. Oh, God's not going to do it because I'm feeling a little emotional. Oh, God's not going to do it because I don't have all of the money. No, that just means you have to fight over those giants. And what was the instruction? Hallelujah. Here, I, I need to read this to you. If we can remember... I thank you, God. God is so good. Like whenever God does things like this, that he puts everything he's been telling me together and someone just gave me a word and someone was like, it's about to make sense. And I'm like, good, because God has been telling me like little pieces. It's about to make sense. So what did the Lord tell them to do? He told them to go around Jericho. Do you guys remember that God told them to go around Jericho? Okay, here it is. I'm like looking for it. On verse six, then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its 
king and its fighting man march around the city once with all the armed man do this for six days have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark on the seventh day march down around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets when you hear the sound a long blast of the trumpets amen have the whole army give a loud shout then the walls of the city will collapse and the army will go up everyone straight in okay so what is the lord telling us to do now right because maybe you're like girl there's giants in my promised land okay god in a way is telling you to worship your way through this in a way god is saying don't stay quiet in a way god is saying pray pray uh pray read the word out loud worship out loud if you know about pentecostal churches you know that in churches we're loud and we're shouting when we're declaring well this is the attitude that you're going to need for you to be able to take possession of your promised land this season you're going to have to worship your way through it you're going to have to praise god through it you're going to have to give god a shout of praise if you go to church and if you don't maybe you should find yourself a home church you're going to have to start doing things a little bit different and if your neighbor looks a little bit looks at you a little bit weird just tell them the walls are coming down the walls are coming down the walls are coming down i can't stay quiet i can't sit still i can't act like there's not giants i have to take possession of what the lord has for me because the walls are coming down somebody has to declare at this today hallelujah the walls are coming down and as you start going around the walls of jericho as you start marching around you're going to see how each time you go around you're going to have a little bit more strength you're going to have a little bit more courage you're going to have you're going to believe a little bit more it's about to make more sense so somebody has to say i have to give god a shout because my seventh day is coming my seventh day is coming i have to give god a shout i have to give god a praise my seventh day is coming oh i've been marching one time i've been marching two times i've been marching three times i wanted to give up the fifth time i was about to not make it to the sixth time but i made it to my seventh time and the walls are coming down i made it to the seventh day i made it and i'm going to shout i'm going to praise i'm going to worship i don't make it i don't care if it makes other people uncomfortable i don't care if people question why i'm doing what i'm doing somebody has to take this miracle personal because god is giving you the instructions on what to do to make sure the walls come down the walls of depression the walls of poverty the walls of confusion the walls of abuse the walls are coming down the generational curses are coming down the walls are coming down over your life but in order for that to come to pass somebody has to make a little bit of noise somebody has to make the devil uncomfortable if there's something the devil doesn't want you to do is praise god that's why as soon as you put a worship song on, you're like, oh, I'm no longer feeling how I was feeling two minutes ago. Because the devil knows that the moment you tap into a spirit of worship, that's it. It's over for him. And he's lost the battle. And I'm here to tell somebody in this wonderful, wonderful day that the devil has lost its power over you. That's why the attacks are coming. Because the devil knows I lost her. That's it. She understands her purpose. He understands his calling. And this is the moment in which you need to run and be courageous and be in this holy prideness. Because you need to understand that your moment is here. Your moment is here. The moment is here. Your moment is here. I'm serious. I'm not speaking to you out of emotion. I'm not speaking to you just to... No, 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 no. I'm telling you for many of you, whatever this word is for, God is saying your moment is here. You think that next year is going to be the same? No. Each, each season is different. And for many of you, again, you were in the wilderness. But the time is coming for you to come out. And we can't be like the Israelites all, you know, doubting God, even though he brought you through it and he provided you everything you needed at this moment. God is saying, it's not time to doubt me now. After I brought you through that, somebody has to say, if God brought me through that, he could bring me through anything. That's why you need to trust the word of the Lord. Sorry, God. You need to trust the word of God because if God brought you through those seasons, I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing God can't bring you through. There's nothing God can't bring you through. And this is a season in which the walls are coming down. So then it says the Lord told them what else to do. Right? <sighs> Hallelujah. So I'm trying to find the, the day. Okay. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times. Verse 16 of Joshua 6, it says, The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout. 
Okay, shout, he said, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Okay, I feel like that's really important as well. You know, something God always tells us, and God bless everyone joining me right now. If you haven't already liked this video and subscribe to my channel if you feel like this is a good word for you. Something I must mention, right? Because I want you to believe this word, but I don't ever want you to forget about God. Don't ever forget about God, especially when God does what he's doing this next season. Don't forget about him. And if there are things that are coming into your life that are going to want to make you forget, for instance, I'm going to share something really quickly. I, I've been given, an, like, I have opportunities to work at other jobs and do things that are going to take time, take away time from me being with God, right? It's crazy how many opportunities come when you're getting close to the promised land. I'm like, where were you guys at whenever I needed something back then? Not a coincidence, right? So I was in prayer and I, I heard the Lord say to me, and it was so sweet, but I heard, I felt like I was saying like, don't forget about me. Like, don't do things that are going to keep you away. Don't do things that are going to make you miss church. Don't do things that are going to make you miss prayer, right? Don't, the, the prayers are the things that are going to get you to where God is taking you. So don't forget about God. And now be like, okay, when well, I'm in the promised land, this was good. Bye. No, don't forget about God again. And if there are things even if it's going to bring you more money, even if it's going to bring you something materialistic that might be better, don't ever jeopardize your relationship with God because this next season, everything is going to keep on prospering as long as you have God. The moment you like disconnect yourself from God and you're like, no, like I can't go to church because I work. And I say this to you with love, but from experience, I've helped people at church We've prayed for them. We've fasted for them. We've uh, done. We've done a lot of things for them. They get the job and then they can't come to church. Oh, I'm busy. I, I have church. I, I have to work now. Like, why don't you tell your job that you can't, you know, work the times that you have to go to church? So this next season, right? The same way Joshua told them, he said, "The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord." So everything that God is bringing to you in this season that's coming into your life needs to be devoted to him. And it's going to be many things. I hear the voice of the Lord telling me right now, marriage. Somebody might be getting married this next season. And you know what? I had a sister that in Christ that told me that she's getting married. She got married just recently. So congratulations to her. So marriage might be the thing that the Lord has been promising you, right? That you're going to meet your kingdom spouse and you're going to have an amazing um, God fearing family, whatever it is that God gives you this season needs to be devoted to God needs to be devoted a business, your career, your ministry, music, whatever that might be. Amen. It needs to be devoted to God, right? The promised land that was given to them wasn't for them to have a nice place to sleep and just for them to chill. No, it was for them to devote it to the Lord. So for whoever this word is for, the Lord is saying just that. I'm going to, you have to devote to me. Devote to me what I'm giving you. Because the Lord is trusting you with it. Right? The Lord is trusting you with it. Give me just one moment. Amen. My little brother is just like, what are you doing? I'm preaching. Amen. It has to be devoted to the Lord. It has to be devoted to God. Amen. And just real quick, just uh, just to redeclare um, a word that the Lord gave me a couple of days ago is that he wants to lift up your head. Then it says only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies we sent. Right. So even there, there was this like vindication for this woman, because whenever God does something, people of God, and I, I've really been, I'll be honest with you. I've been learning a lot of things this past year. This past year was definitely a lot of isolation for me, but it wasn't like I was, and I don't, I say this and sometimes people are like, oh, you're lonely. No, I felt so close to God. And as God removed certain people from my life, 
I started to learn a lot about what love really is about. And in walking with God, just like God did one miracle for Joshua, giving them the promised land, God also restores Rahab at the same time, right? So as I was learning one thing, as God was doing one thing in my life, like restoring me and, and healing my heart, he was also restoring my ministry. He was also connecting me with other people. He was also bringing love into my life. He was also healing my relationship with my parents. He was also healing my relationship with my siblings. Like as God is doing one thing in your life, he's like doing other things that you didn't even ask for. That you might have been like, God, all I'm asking is for you to, you know, bless me. And then God blesses you, restores you, gives you a car, heals you from cancer, gives you a marriage. And you're like, whoa, that's what I've been learning about God. That when God says your time is coming, that's why the Bible says that he surpasses your expectations. He does. You're like, oh God, I'll you. I'm okay with this small miracle. And God's like, no, I want to give you a lot of things. I want to bless you. Why? Because he loves you right? Because he loves you, because he cares about you, because he wants to give you the best. So this is that season for many of you. As the Lord is doing something in your life, something that maybe you are aware of, God is also saying, expect surprises. Expect other things that you didn't even ask me about. Expect breakthrough in areas that you weren't even praying about. Because what the Lord hallelujah, is bringing into your life is going to affect every area of your life. What God is trying to do with you is going to impact every area of your life. I hear the voice of the Lord saying, don't limit me. Don't limit me. Don't limit God. How do we limit God? We only do one thing. We only work in one thing. And God might be giving you multiple ideas, but you're like, no, no, no. God is saying, don't limit me on what I can do. I also hear God saying, change how you pray to me sometimes. Sometimes when we pray, we only pray about one thing. Like God, just, just do this one thing, just marriage. And God is saying, if you would just welcome my kingdom, that's why when Jesus would pray, he would say, your kingdom come, your will be done. Because Jesus wasn't just praying for one thing. Like God, just bring healing, but don't bring deliverance. <laughs> just bring restoration, but don't bring, you know, salvation. No, your kingdom come, right? Everything that has to do with God come. Everything that has to do with the power of God, with who he is, with his kingdom come. And that is what God is bringing to pass in the life of many of you. The kingdom of God is getting to be established in your life. And that's why it's going to impact every area of your life. You've reached the point of deliverance. And whoever this little message is for, just let me know. Like this video or comment so I can know. You've reached the point of deliverance in which the things from your past don't affect you anymore so that is a sign that you are ready to come into what the lord has for you and just to finish this up people of god it's going to be big it's going to be big what the lord has for you is going to be big and i'm excited for you i really am i'm blessed to share this word because i know that when god speaks like i get a little nervous because he brings it to pass so quickly he brings it to pass so quickly that you need to get ready. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. You need to get ready, right? You need to be prepared. Um, Give me one moment. You need to be prepared because it's coming in quick. It's coming in quick. And I, we bless you, Lord. Just, just tell God thank you for a moment because um, I'm happy for you, right? Like they, they, at this moment, the Israelites had gone to, through the wilderness. They have gone through their hard season and people of God, I'm going to just say this with love. I always say that. Amen. Like, I'm going to say this with love. Um, you know, this word is for you because you've been processed. Okay. I, I can't say that this is going to be for everyone. But I do have to say that you know that this word is for you is because you've been processed. And I pray for you, Rowan, that God provides to you everything you need in Jesus' mighty name. We cancel any spirit of revenge in your life. Any attack of the enemy is canceled now. And doors of opportunity and blessings come to you so you can have a nice place to be. Amen. You've been processed. You know this word is for you because you've been processed. Now, something I need to also mention, and I'm going to give a quick disclaimer and God, 
I do this with respect. I've been trying to make a video about this, but I don't know how to word it. I'm just going to say it now and allow God to reach the right person because maybe the person is watching me right now. Let me know this is for you. And this is not a call for you to sow into my ministry or anything like that. But something that the Lord showed me in a vision a couple of days ago, I saw somebody was cleaning a dirty counter. They were cleaning, they had soap and they were cleaning and they had money in their in their hand and they put it in a little bag and the money fell out and the one money got wet and then they put the money back into the little basket. So something that the Lord has been teaching me about, and I want to share this with you as well, that as the blessings of the Lord come, get your thoughts and offerings together get this together i have to say this just really quickly make sure that you're giving to god what belongs to the lord do not steal from the kingdom of god if you have to give your thoughts to your church i would advise you to do so that's the vision that i saw cleaning right cleaning is like can represent you know cleaning up your life cleaning up uh, your yourself, your heart, your mind, that salvation. And as you're cleaning, that brings prosperity. If you walk with God, if you're always giving, that's fine. Again, the tithing and offerings are different things. So it's, again, it's not a call to give, but it's just what I have to say as a minister, right? And out of respect to God, because I don't want to say, oh, God's going to bless you. And like, okay, what now? make sure you're responsible with your blessings so like i saw on that vision cleaning and then money coming right the money coming out something that the lord was saying to me is that temptation that comes of not wanting to give that you're like ah, oh, it's twenty dollars like i got paid two hundred dollars i have to give 20 I, I i don't know if i should give it god is saying don't let it come out like don't don't let that come into your mind Give to God what belongs to God and don't worry about it. Somebody once one day explained it to me in such a way that it really ministered to me. Two things. One time somebody said that whenever we go shopping, $20 doesn't feel like $20. If you see a shirt that's $20, you're like, oh, that's so cheap. That's so cheap. Ooh, I'm going to get that shirt. Right. But when it's at church, it's like $5. Like, mm, I don't know. Right. So you have to rebuke that spirit because it's spiritual. It wants to come and make you steal from the Lord and then punishment comes into your life. The devil is a lie, right? Because that's how the devil works. He wants to confuse you. And then the second thing that somebody once told me is like, imagine that when you're giving to God, it's almost like he was he's your partner and you're giving to him what already belongs to you, to him, excuse me. And he's going to do with what you give him more than you could have ever done. More than you could have ever done, right? You could have $20 and buy it a shirt, but you could give to God. You bless the, the, his house. You bless his temple. And then the Lord blesses you with things that you can't even imagine. So I just wanted to quickly say that as these blessings come into your life, just always remember to honor God, to honor God with what he gives you. And why does the Lord tell you this? Okay. Why does God tell you this? God doesn't tell you this. I always say this. One of the reasons why the Lord tells us something before it happens is for you to not say, well, I didn't know. <laughs> well, nobody told me, right? Like, I didn't know I was supposed to do this. God's like, no, you're not going to get me like that. So the Lord tells you before it comes. So the Lord is telling you today before the blessings come, before the new job comes, before the opportunities come, before the multiplication, the promotions, all of the goodness that God has in store for you. He holds it back and he says, but just remember this. Remember to give to me what belongs to me. Remember to bless my home. Remember to help the homeless. Remember to pray for the widows. Remember to be at the church. Remember to clean my house. Remember the foundation of what it is to be a believer, a believer of Jesus Christ. We're servants. We're called to serve. We're called to help people. We're called to spread love. So I would say to just keep that in mind. Again, why is the Lord telling you this? Because what's coming is big. And when, when something really big is coming into your life, the Lord, like he wants to prepare you. But like I mentioned, not everyone might be ready for this, right? Like Joshua didn't have a lot of time necessarily to be a hundred percent ready to be the best leader or to be like Josh, to like be like Moses. So for many, maybe the prosperity that's coming is going to be really big that God wants to just make sure that your heart is right. 
Like, just make, just remember this, right? That's what I feel in my spirit. That's how God speaks to me. So I want to share that with you. And just to remind you that what's coming is big. And just trust God that when you give to him what belongs to him, he's going to trust you to continue to bless you, to continue to take care of your business, take care of your family and bless you with things that money can't buy. Okay. Well, God bless you, people of God. This was supposed to be a quick like. I was like, oh, let me go on, on YouTube really quickly. But the Holy Spirit took over. And I'm telling you, God has given me this word for like a week now. He's been just like almost two weeks now, to be honest. Honestly, a long time. <laughs> like I think about it because it was I was supposed to go minister at a church and the Lord told me not to go. And I was like, God, then who is this word for? And now that I'm at church, the Lord told me, tell my people on YouTube. So I pray. I pray that the person that was supposed to hear this word listen to it today and that they receive it and that they know that this is a season in which God is going to do something big. What's coming for you is big. Now, one final thing I want to tell you, amen. One final thing I want to tell you is to pray over this word. Okay. Pray over this word as you received it. Okay. Pray over this word. Amen. Pray over this word. If you want to send me a letter, it's P.O. Box D, Watsahachi, Texas, 75168. I believe it's in the description of this video as well. You can follow me on Instagram as well, and you could reach out to me, and I could send it to you. I don't know if I have my messages open, though, because sometimes I close them just so I can focus on the Lord. But that's P.O. Box D, Watsahachi, Texas, 75168. You can send me a prayer request. People usually send me letters with prayer requests. I have this one's a prayer request. They're really sweet, in my opinion. This one says, love you, sis. This time of year always has me wishing you weren't so far. It doesn't take much to make me smile thinking of you and how much you mean to me. Like, isn't that sweet? All right, people of God. So make sure to pray for this word. Make sure to fast on this word for real. And make sure to keep this word between you and God, okay? One advice I want to tell you or something that the Lord has been teaching me like mm, is to keep my mouth quiet about certain things that he shows me. Um, that's why I don't share every prophetic word on YouTube. Some things are maybe just for me or for the people that I minister um, and mentor, the people that I coach. So God bless your seed on, on YouTube, Jovan. Amen. We bless we bless you, Lord. Okay, I'll put my P.O. box on the description of the video. If you guys feel like to send me anything. Oh, okay. I don't see my nails are breaking. They are. So make sure to keep this word before between you and the Lord. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this moment that you allowed us, God, to come before your presence and to simply receive a word from heaven. We give you all of the glory, God, and all of the honor because you're good, you're wonderful. Father, we pray for protection over this prophetic word. We pray for protection over every person that receives this message. And I just ask you, God, that no spirit of revenge, no spirit of manipulation, no spirit of torment will try and come and distract you or rob the seed that has been planted in you. I pray for protection that you may be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ and that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. At this moment, we cancel any demonic spirit against spirit of torment, depression, anxiety, masturbation, pornography, perversion, anything that is not from God that keeps you away, lust, it, that keeps you away from God is canceled now. Alcoholism, addictions, it leaves your life now in Jesus' mighty name and your life starts walking and starts being directed to the perfect will of our Father. Every plan of the devil to lead you to death, to lead you to suicide, to lead you to self-harm at this moment is canceled by the power that's in the name of Jesus and we declare that you are set free. We declare complete deliverance. We declare that you are a a good soil for this word to be planted on that your heart is 
in the right position for you to receive this word and for this word to bring to you good fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. I hear the Lord saying, cancel any decree of the devil. We cancel any decree of the devil in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we cancel every decree of the devil, every negative word that has been spoken over your life, any witchcraft, any spell, any voodoo, anything that the devil, any psychic readings that the devil is trying to send against you we cancel and we rebuke any witches over your life in jesus mighty name and we declare protection oh father i oh i hear the lord saying right now that god is getting ready to expose a witch in your life god is getting ready to expose them that's a word that the lord told me god is exposing them the people that are have been praying against you the people that have been wanting your downfall don't be surprised if you hear somebody in a in an accident a tire went flat something like that it's going to be the signs of what they were trying to do against you so we rebuke that in jesus name we cover all of our belongings all of our property our finances are covered and everything anybody is trying to pray against us shall not prosper oh, at this moment god i ask you that your winds of glory clear the heavens clear the sky clear our atmosphere clear our bedrooms clear our homes and if there's any other spirit that has been effectively operating against us at this moment it has an order to leave our lives we declare god that we are covered that we are protected that we are renewed and that every word that you has for us at this moment in the season hallelujah at this moment in the season leaves now there is a spirit that just came to near me <laughs> which means that there is there's somebody maybe going through something like that maybe a spirit that comes and visit to you next to your bed and just like stands there like a spirit of torment or something why well, rebuke that in jesus mighty name we cancel you have no power no authority and we declare that the same fire that fell when elijah called on to the lord is falling now is falling now it burns any demon in jesus mighty name we rebuke you we rebuke you we counsel you you have no power you have been defeated you have been destroyed you're a loser you're ineffective we counsel you in jesus mighty name any monitoring spirit leaves now in jesus mighty name any stalking taking place in your life from your enemies leaves in the mighty name of jesus at this moment we pray god and we release our enemies of the assignment of acting against us we release our enemies of the assignment of wanting to torment us oh father you said to pray for our enemies because sometimes they're being used by the devil and at this moment we release our enemies from attacking us from coming against us from wanting to destroy them we release their minds we release their spirits and we declare that they have complete control over their lives whatever the devil was trying to use them for against us is broken now that purpose in their life is broken now in jesus mighty name and even our enemies are set free to worship you oh i i set you free i i release you you release me there's a release happening right now of those people that want to come against you that that they have this obsession with you and want to destroy you that's what the enemy is trying to use them for in your life and at this moment we declare that they are being released they are being released in jesus mighty name oh i wish i oh i do in jesus mighty name we pray for that we pray for that in jesus we declare a decree a, de a release over the people of release over the people of god we cover you i cover you with the blood of jesus christ and i declare that no spirit of revenge will come and try to act against you declare that no spirit of revenge will try to come and mend you or a goal it's holy ground everything you step is holy no more going to unholy places if you've been going to clubs if you've been going to strip clubs god is i mean i don't you don't have to say that's me but if you've been going to places that are not holy god is calling you at this moment to stop doing that because god is saying you're getting ready to enter into holy places so at this moment god we declare that everywhere our feet step on is holy every place that we go through is holy in jesus mind 
mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we repent of any sins. We repent of anything that's trying to follow you, follow us from that sin from the past, releases you now in Jesus' mighty name. No more spirit. Somebody has to say at this moment, it has no power over me. It has no control over me. It has no authority over me. I break the covenant. I cancel its covenant. It's ineffective at this moment and it can no longer prosper against me. Every soul tie hallelujah every spiritual spouse has to leave your life now by the power that's in the name of jesus no more perverted dreams no more perverted feelings we declare that your body is the temple of jesus and the home of the holy spirit and Anything that is not from God that has been hiding in your stomach, in your chest, in your body, in your arms, in your hands, in your mind, in your private parts, leaves you now. Leaves you now in Jesus' mighty name. And we declare that you are covered from head to toe with the blood of Jesus Christ. You are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. And I hear the Lord say to put a blessing over your life. Everybody that watched this from beginning to an end, the Lord is telling you today, a blessing over your life, a blessing over your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he walk with you everywhere you go. May your business prosper. May your career prosper. May your finances be multiplied. May your marriage be restored. May everything, may your children be kingdom children. May your church flourish. May your business flourish. May your joy flourish. May you be in multiplication. May you be promoted in Jesus mighty name. Oh, I pray a blessing over your life at this moment. A blessing from heaven. Heaven is falling. A miracle is coming into the life of somebody at this moment. Oh, Father, we decree and we declare every word, every prayer at this moment, a blessing over your life, a blessing that's going to cancel every curse, a blessing that's going to shut the doors of the enemy, a blessing over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ and the people of God saying, Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Gracias, Señor, por este momento tan hermoso en tu presencia. Te honramos y te bendecimos sobre todas las cosas, porque Dios, tú has sido bueno. God is good. And I thank God. I want to just quickly say thank you so much for joining me today. And just thank you to everyone that's been following my channel for some time now. I hope, you know, I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me, and I love y'all very much. I'm blessed to be able to be connected with people of God from all over. I know there's people that watch me from um, Australia, from Germany, from Africa, from other places. I'm I'm blessed to be connected with y'all, and I'm just I'm celebrating already. I'm going to go celebrate today. I'm going to go to the orchestra with my family. We're going to see a live show. I got myself a cute dress. You could follow me on Instagram and see a little bit about how that goes. The description, the link to my socials are going to be in the description of this video from Nigeria, from Colorado, from Michigan, from Canada. That's that's wonderful. From from Florida. So for you to just open your heart and you know receive a word, I really do appreciate that. From India, Gloria a Dios, hermana. Bendiciones a cada uno de ustedes, que Dios me los bendiga siempre y que siempre esté con ustedes. From New York, Nashville, New Jersey, Puerto Rico. Woo! I love Puerto Rico. From, from China? What? That's awesome. From Kenya, Belgium. What? South France? What? Washington, Michigan, Brooklyn, Qatar. What I'm telling you, God is amazing. From Virgin Islands, from Indiana, Italy? No way. I want to go to Italy one day. From France, from Finland, United Kingdom, from Trinidad. I didn't know. Wow, I thought we were all here in Texas. <laughs> well, God bless y'all, my brothers and sisters in Christ from all over. From Greece. I also want to go to Greece. Oh, that's amazing. The Ohio, Philadelphia, well, God, Dubai. I also want to go to Dubai one day. Well, God bless your nation. May God protect y'all. 
may God make himself present. I know that around the world, there's so many things going on. So I'm glad that we're able to praise God in freedom, right? That's that's honestly a big blessing. So God bless every single one of you. Again, just get excited because what's coming over your life is going to be very big. God bless everyone that uh, has sown into this ministry. If you sown into PayPal or Cash App or if you sown into the YouTube live stream, God bless y'all. Thank you for blessing this ministry. Thank you for believing in this ministry, for receiving a word and for wanting to help continue the word of God to be preached. You guys are basically sponsors to me and my ministry and my church. Um, so I really do appreciate that we passed out God Cares Bags to the homeless. We've helped a lot of people around the United States and Panama and, and Colombia. So thank you for all of your support, for all of your love, for all of all of that. I really do appreciate it. Okay. Again, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram or on our Facebook page, Daniela Oyaga. And you can also follow us on our ministry page, which is God Cares Movement. People of God, just pray for me. I'm thinking about starting some new projects and just pray that it could be a blessing to people and that it could reach a lot of people because I would like what the Lord is placing in my heart to actually become what he has been telling me that he wants it to be. So God bless y'all. San Antonio. I used to live there. I miss San Antonio sometimes. God bless y'all. And I'll be seeing you guys next time. Have a wonderful weekend and happy holidays. Take care.